Good evening. The Florida Department of Transportation would like to welcome you to the public hearing for the I-10 Project Development and Environment, or PD&E, study from SR-10 US-90 in Gadsden County to SR-263 Capital Circle Northwest in Leon County. Financial Management Project Numbers 222530-5-22-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0
in compliance with all applicable federal environmental laws and pursuant to 23 U.S.C. 327 and the implementing MOU between FDOT and FHWA signed on December 14, 2016. The FDOT Office of Environmental Management in Tallahassee is the approving authority. This hearing is being held to provide you with the opportunity to comment on this project. This public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on the slide. Public participation at this hearing is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation District 3 office or the Tallahassee office of the Florida Department of Transportation. This contact information is displayed on the screen, at the sign-in table at the hearing, and in the project handout. The study limits for FPID 22253-5-22-01 extend from west of SR-10 US-90 to the Leon County line in Gadsden County, approximately 2.7 miles. The study limits for FPID 22253-6-22-01 extend from the Gadsden County line to the west of SR-263 Capital Circle Northwest, in Leon County, approximately 1.5 miles. The total project limits are approximately 4.2 miles. The purpose of this I-10 PD&E study is to evaluate widening I-10 from four to six lanes from west of SR-10, US-90, in Gadsden County to west of SR-263, Capital Circle Northwest, in Leon County as one of the main east-west strategic intermodal system corridors in northern Florida this project will provide consistency with other adjacent capacity projects increase regional mobility and provide system linkage necessary for efficient intra and interstate movement of people and goods critical for Florida's economic development these I-10 widening projects are needed for planning consistency system linkage economic development hurricane evacuation and freight movement and growth the preferred alternative improvements include widen I-10 from four lane to six lane to the inside, replace all bridge structures with a single bridge structure carrying eastbound and westbound travel lanes where the bridge typical section over US-90 will provide eight lanes, three travel lanes, and one acceleration lane in each direction, and the bridge typical sections over O'Clockney River and Midway Branch, O'Clockney Relief, will provide six travel lanes, three lanes in each direction, for a total project cost of $147 million. The preferred alternative for I-10 consists of a 40-foot median with three 12-foot lanes in each direction. Eastbound traffic will have a 10-foot outside paved shoulder and a 10-foot inside paved shoulder. Westbound traffic will have a 10-foot outside paved shoulder and a 12-foot inside paved shoulder with a high-tension cable median barrier. The proposed I-10 overpass bridge over US-90 will consist of four 12-foot lanes in each direction, 10-foot outside shoulders with traffic railings, and 12-foot inside shoulders with a median barrier wall. The proposed bridges over Midway Branch and O'Clockney River will consist of three 12-foot lanes in each direction, 10-foot outside shoulders with traffic railings, and 12-foot inside shoulders with a median barrier wall. An important element of this PD&E study was to evaluate the potential project impacts and benefits. A wide range of environmental resources were evaluated, including various social, cultural, natural, and physical features. Engineering and traffic factors were also considered. This slide illustrates the impacts for the preferred alternative. There are no anticipated impacts to social and economic and cultural resources. For natural resources, there are 3.49 acres of wetlands, no floodplain impacts, and no anticipated impacts to endangered and threatened species. For physical, no air quality, no noise, no contaminated sites, 12 utilities, and traffic LOSC. The total project cost is $147 million. A comparison of the impacts from the build alternatives is provided in the environmental document prepared for this project. FDOT is conducting a Project Development and Environment, or PD&E, study for this project. 
the pd e process is used to evaluate potential impacts to determine an alternative utilizing a continuous community outreach process to ensure that all interested parties have meaningful participation in the process. Public input and information received at this hearing will be taken into consideration when preparing the final documents for this study. This graphic represents the delivery process for a project, beginning with the PD&E phase and ending with the construction phase. We are at the public hearing stage of the PD&E study. The Gadsden County portion of this project is not currently funded for design. The Leon County portion of this project is currently funded for design. The construction phase for both portions is not currently funded. Thank you. That concludes the formal presentation. We will now begin the public comment period of the public hearing. The next step is to incorporate your input on this public hearing into our decision-making process. After the comment period closes, and your input has been considered, a decision will be made and the final PD&E document will be sent to the FDOT Office of Environmental Management, which based on the Memorandum of Understanding signed with the Federal Highway Administration on December 14, 2016, has approval authority on this project granting location and design concept acceptance. Please note that we will not be responding to your comments and questions today, but we will respond in writing at a later date. Anyone desiring to make a statement will now have an opportunity to do so. There are multiple ways you may provide your comments tonight, written or verbally or online. If you do not wish to speak at the microphone, you can provide your comments directly to the court reporter. Every comment carries equal weight.